If you want to take pictures and post on socials, we have three um, hashtags that you can use. Uh, two hashtags here, three there. Uh, <laughs> and we also have some, maybe you saw some post-its and a lot of pens, actually a lot of pens, uh, I think they are enough, that you can write some wishes for work academy and put it on the, the left uh, right things. And there is another right thing that says what challenges would you like the work academy learning management system to solve. And you can also write as many as you want and put them there. So yeah, and now it's recording. And now we can start. I will start again telling that uh, hi, I'm Olga. And uh, I run this uh, amazing startup which turns two years today. For, for two years, yes. And uh, during this startup journey, I've been in touch with a lot of learning and development managers because this is for whom we work, whom we serve, and uh, whose life we try to make a little bit better with technology. And um, while talking to these people, I found some similarities in learning and development departments and actually in startups. And this is why I prepared this small presentation that they call why you should run your L&D department as you would run a startup. And uh, yeah, I already mentioned that it's our academy's second birthday. And uh, yeah, before we start, uh, let's uh, talk about pains. So I would like to invite you to think about what pains do you experience in your daily job. If you don't want to share them now, I will have exactly the same slide uh, by the end of the presentation, so you can think a little bit about it. If you want, just say, okay, <laughs> that's fine. We, we can move on. And uh, yeah, I can talk about my pains because startups are hard. And there are a lot of pains because of the way how the processes work and because of some things that uh, we should have maybe thought more carefully or from strategic point of view organize better, but you never know how it will turn out, right? This is why it's hard. And um, essentially I wanted to talk about three pillars. I want to talk about assumptions, I want to talk about MVP, which stands for minimum viable product, and I want to talk about numbers or reports in analytics. And uh, of course, passion. This is the fundamental thing. So let's talk about assumptions. And I want to invite you to think about how many times you've used some products or services that you thought, hey, the guys who created this, they assume something about me which is not true. It happens a lot, right? Because we, startups, we uh, create our products based on assumptions, right? And uh, I saw that this also happens sometimes in learning and development departments. So, um, yeah, we imagine this and then it's not like that. And why is that? So I will give one example, um, <laughs> I will give one example uh, of one uh, learning and development manager who was telling me, hey, we are using this authoring tool to create very engaging content and then uh, uh, the employees um, go through it and it's so nice and I said, okay, and does it um, produce data for your analytics uh, system? And she said, no, because it's a self-contained piece of content. And I said, okay, so how do you know it's engaging if you cannot measure it? And she said, because we assume so. And <laughs> there are more situations like this, and we do, when we create products, we do exactly the same. But if we in startups would continue doing that, then we would fail. What should we do so this doesn't happen? Uh, we should uh, talk to people who use our products. Uh, this is why I try to talk a lot to learning and development managers and professionals and uh, people who use our platform, like what do you think about it, uh, what do you like about it, what do you don't like, what, what could be better, because uh, if we just continue building it based on our assumptions and we have a lot, then we create a monster that no one will use it. So the three things that uh, we found out uh, make this thing better is First of all, asking the users 
before building something. So extensive user research, maybe in the learning and development department will um, translate into talking to the employees. Hey, uh, would you like to have this training? Uh, how would you like it to be? What would you like to achieve? How would you like to um, make an impact on this company goals with these trainings? And um, then after the training is created or part of it, get uh, early employees feedback about it and uh, iterate, iterate as much as possible. And um, yeah, we have two L&D managers here and maybe uh, you can share some stories uh, how you do that uh, usually with uh, your clients or, or employees, like how do you get feedback you know, from them? Yeah, maybe after uh, the thing with some drinks, we can talk about it. I think it's super interesting. Then, uh, MVP, minimum viable product, uh, or we also like in startups using the term MSP, which is minimum sellable product, something small that we can sell. Uh, and it can, I realized that it can also be applied in learning and development department, and it's pretty much related to the topic before because uh, oh, this is uh, this nice image that illustrates MVP uh, is uh, made by Henrik Knieber uh, and uh, it uh, illustrates like w what it means and before I tell uh, explain this picture I want to point out that this picture is uh, well, th this photo was taken from the book that uh, I wrote with Rui and it's about uh, software development from A to Z. Uh, just to mention that we are published uh, authors, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, and what does it mean? So when you, when you want to build a car, of course we, we can start from the wheel, then we build two wheels, then four wheels, then we build some uh, more things, and then in five years we have a car. But what if in five years you realize that it's not usable? So the way to do it in a nicer way is instead of building a wheel, uh, a, a wheel first, we build a skate, then we build a bicycle, then we build a motorcycle, and then we build a car. And actually this is what uh, can be done in learning and development. So instead of building a huge academy for our employees that takes a lot of resources and years to build, and then figure out that it doesn't work uh, as we assumed it would work, uh, we can actually spend a week or so to build a small piece of training, then get feedback, iterate, iterate, test it again, get feedback, and then come up with the big thing. And maybe you can also share you, uh, how you usually do it in your companies or with your clients. And um, yeah, my favorite one, numbers. So I realized that uh, both uh, startups and learning and development departments have to show some numbers. Uh, so we uh, startups, we have to show the numbers to the clients, partners, and of course investors. And LNDs have to show the numbers to, I don't know, CEOs, to board meetings like, hey, the LND works. It creates something here. And uh, so what, metrics are uh, used in L&D. Uh, when I talk to learning and development professionals, sometimes they say, okay, engagement rate, time to complete training, uh, dropout rate, uh, passing rate, performance, number of trainings, blah, blah, blah. And then I think, okay, passing rate, it means that the number of people who started the course completed it. But what if you as an L&D tell to people, hey, this is a compliance mandatory course. You will have 100% on it. Done, great success. But does it really mean that uh, it's successful? So, but we as a startup, sometimes we also uh, think about some wrong metrics. So for example, in startups, um, the metrics like RRR, MRR, uh, annual recurring revenue, monthly recurring revenue, growth rate, number of pain clients, number of users, churn rate, whatever. And sometimes we want to impress our investors and we think of the wrong metrics. So for example, in our case, we have a number of pain clients and we also have a number of users, which of course is much bigger, the biggest uh, 
uh, it's about the learners. And because we also, um, we not only work with the companies, um, like um, profitable companies, we also work with NGOs and uh, startups that make social impact. And uh, with them we have a different model, but they have a lot of users. So for example, we work with green tech NGOs and with education NGOs. Uh, and uh, they have like 60k users. And we come to investors and say, we have 60k users per month. And they say, wow, that's impressive. How does it translate into money in my pocket? And we, in no way, because it's social impact. Hey, green tech, education. Like, hey, I want the money in my pocket. So then we realize that, um, we should talk about ROI. And actually in both cases, return on investment, this is what matters. So for us and for investors, for startups and investors, it means like, okay, as an investor I put money, but how much of it and with which multiplier it will come back? And for the companies that use learning and development to create uh, some impact, it means like, okay, we put resources into learning and training but how much of it will actually translate into achieving company goals, how it will help. And it, it actually helps a lot. It's just a way how to show it and what metrics to use. And we uh, found, uh, like, uh, it's not a, a system, but if you start thinking about company goals first, and then you go to learning outcomes, and after that you create training based on those outcomes, you actually can somehow attach uh, uh, training metrics to, to the business metrics. We um, uh, created a fillable PDF about uh, this uh, system that you can fill with business goals and some resources that you have, that you can use it uh, in your work. You can rather write me an email to get it, or we will send a presentation after it, then you will get it anyway. So, and then I found out that uh, in both cases, uh, people who are most successful in what they do in startups or in learning and development departments, uh, uh, these are people who are super passionate about what they do. And this is the key. And I think when you have it, all the numbers, assumptions, user feedbacks, and everything will work out. You will learn on the way, you will iterate, and uh, it will all work out. Uh, so here is a QR code for you to follow us on LinkedIn, because there we post some news about our academy, about uh, this kind of events, and uh, uh, about uh, other things. And um, this was this. This is this event, and it's still running. And uh, now maybe you are ready to talk about some pains. And uh, not only uh, tell your novella about your pains as L&D professionals, but maybe uh, you guys can talk about some pains that you experienced while learning at work. Maybe something happened that uh, shouldn't have happened, or maybe some training was useless and it was mandatory. Or can you think about some example? And if you don't want to talk now, again, we can talk about it. Okay, and um, here I thought that we as a work academy, as a technology company, of course we cannot remove the pain, but we can offer probably some solution. And we thought of, uh, of an offer to give to people who, to all the 300 people participating in this event. <laughs> we thought about, um, like, when you, when, you, when you have a new system injected into your company, like be it a learning management system, authoring tool, whatever, uh, usually you lack some guidance. Uh, because the systems are complex uh, and uh, because you want to have the best application of it to your case, it's always different, and you try to do it alone. And we decided to give three months of like full guidance through our system, if you subscribe to it, and uh, actually help you to apply it to your case. We think that it's already rather intuitive than not, 
But uh, still, we also found out that uh, when you go with people hand by hand, it's always uh, makes experience more friendly and nice. And uh, thank you. <laughs> Maybe we can switch off the recording. 